This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Mading Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Achim, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are varied. The July uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place. We were very unfortunate, including uh, country-specific. Fixing Sir Sudan, ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing Sir Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingon. This week on Fixing Sir Sudan, we take a sneak peek into the troubled world of the Sir Sudan Civil Aviation Authority. More than five years on, since this body was set up, we speak about the challenges and opportunities facing the authority. What is the status of the airport terminal? Is the South Sudan Civil Aviation Authority a good idea for fixing South Sudan? Joining us for the show, Captain David Subek Dada, the Chief Executive Officer of the South Sudan Civil Aviation Authority. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And also joining us is Peter Cholquat, spokesman of the South Sudan Civil Aviation Authority. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Dolku. We are very much privileged to be here today in the Fixing South Sudan show. Talking about Civil Aviation Authority, it's its own body, and people don't even know because there's not much awareness about this uh, institution. So why don't we start there? What can you tell us about uh, South Sudan Civil Aviation Authority? What does it do? Uh, thank you once again. I think this is a great show to our general public to know at least about civil aviation. I believe since we started in 2006, we were under Minister of Transport, Roads and Bridges uh, until 2012 when we were separated from the uh, Ministry of Transport and became uh, an autonomous uh, entity as a South Sudan Civil Aviation. Yes. Aviation talks about what? It deals with what? What is the main duties that you do at the institution? Well, the Civil Aviation, first of all, we have two aviation entities in South Sudan. We have the Civil Aviation and then the military aviation, which is the Air Force. These are two different uh, entities. But we do cooperate somewhere in other uh, issues in regards to, for example, uh, whenever we have an air crash or whatever incident, always the defense come in to assist us. And then in future or up to today, if there is any intruding uh, aircraft coming into the nation, we also inform the Minister of Defense to take care of the situation. That is where we meet. But as of now, I'm talking only about civil aviation. Uh, civil aviation is a regulator of all the operations in the South Sudan on aviation matters. We make policies, we make uh, regulations and uh, for the proper smooth running of the civil aviation in accordance to the ICAO annexes and uh, regulations and manuals. This is the international uh, regulator? Yeah, this is a, we are all under ICAO, which is International Civil Aviation Organization. All civil matters are regulated or are controlled under ICAO. And uh, Peter, give us the full scope of what you do. Okay, thank you, Mudingar. Uh, I would like to <coughs> thank you for getting us to this show. 
uh, first uh, air transport initially as a whole thing is a very big thing. And its main function is to facilitate business and movement of people globally. So we are in a global setup. And as my CEO had just said, civil aviation is in a global setup. And International Civil Aviation Authority is to promote basically the air transport business and the movement of people through safe regulations of the aviation sector. We are also implementing agenda of the African Union under APACAC. That is Africa Civil Aviation Commission. It has its own regulations on what Africa aviation system should look like. So we have things like Yamasukru decisions that is supposed to ensure that all the African continents have smooth aviation systems and ensure that people move freely. So Civil Aviation South Sudan is set up in a way that it fulfills international obligations at the local level. And here we do regulation, as my CEO had just said. We also ensure that civil aviation in the country is promoted to be an efficient uh, business system because we have to monitor the players so that they are acting fairly and they are doing a fair business. We know South Sudan is a landlord country and air freight is a key function in civil aviation. So we ensure that people who are doing air transport business uh, are accorded safe environment to do their business. Thank you. And uh, we talk of uh, the challenges that you are facing and there are really challenges of regulations. You have so many aircrafts operating in South Sudan and most of the time you are not able uh, to monitor all of them. Or tell me in your own words, what are those challenges you are facing? Yeah, in regards to the challenges that we have, we have, first of all, let me go to what you have said about many aircrafts coming in and we are not able to, to control. I want to assure you that we are controlling them. They are not just moving on their own. You know, South Sudan, as uh, my colleague have said, it is a landlocked country and due to no proper roads, net network, so totally South Sudan depend on uh, air transport, whether on people or goods. That's why we see a lot of small planes coming in to operate locally all over the state. But for international uh, flights, they are there. We are also controlling them. And uh, what I want to say is the challenges that we are having, as we have said, there are too many aircrafts in and around. But the main challenge is the equipments that we are having in the country are not enough because we should be having radars up to now so that we can monitor each and every aircraft moving. But up to now we don't have the radar for communication. It's not radar for military detection but for airplane uh, movements. Why not? Uh, due to lack of uh, resources that we don't have, and uh, that's why we cannot acquire the, the, the radar. But we're looking in the, into it. I believe in the near future, we shall uh, own it. The gateway into the Civil Aviation Authority work is the airport, the Juba International Airport. Uh, what can you say about its development over time? People see that uh, the airport or the terminals are not finishing. Is that one of the challenges you're facing as well? Yeah, for sure, terminal is a, the most big challenge. If you can remember, since 2005, 6, up to 2017, 16, when our minister decided to uh, rehabilitate the old terminal, to expand it a bit, because that terminal in the past, I think it was meant only for 150 passengers. But the way you look at it now, it is taking over thousands of people, incoming and outgoing. So accommodating them is a problem. That's why that terminal issue is a big challenge. If it is not finished, we are going to be facing more and more problems. And uh, right now, you're facing a lot of congestion. So when do you estimate that maybe there's going to be a vibrant airport? 
Well, up to now, the current uh, old terminal, which is being rehabilitated, it's almost going to its end of finishing. We are only left with the installation of a conveyor belt for luggage movement and then uh, counters for airlines. If they, because they are on the way, I believe, or I hear that they are in Mombasa, according to the company. As soon as they reach, I believe by the end of this month, hopefully, we should be opening. Peter Chol, the challenges you face are immense. You cannot underestimate uh, the challenges of setting up uh, a civil aviation authority in a new nation. Challenges of infrastructure, even challenges of making people aware about how they are supposed to approach the airport and even access the services. So what can you say in this regard? Yeah, thank you, Mdingor. We are facing a lot of challenges, and I hope our public is aware of many of them. One you have just talked about is the issue of some aircrafts operating, and sometimes some of them are causing accident. <clears throat> Let our community be aware that basically we are doing trade-off here. Our runways are very bad. When you see aircraft, it's a very costly uh, uh, equipment. And some people who are doing businesses here, they are using at least some a little bit old aircrafts and trying to make sure that these aircrafts operate effectively with bad runways is a challenge. So that is a main issue in the term of equipment. Coming to the operations of the airport, we are facing a lot of problems. First, we don't have sufficient infrastructure in place as my boss has just talked about. The, the terminal building is bad and the infrastructure as a whole uh, is not good. We are facing a lot of financial constraints to make sure that things are fixed. And this is a key issue, and it is also facing the whole government. So it is not only civil aviation. Coming to the human resource, we have little capacity in terms of human resource, not even well motivated, because you also know the, the, the system of uh, our, our public service here. Uh, people are getting too little for too much work to do. And this is facing us as management. We are trying to train them, but we don't have capacity to train them, and we are depending on our, our neighbors to do so. But these days, I think we have requested so much, and they are not really helping anymore. So it is time for us as government to take charge and start putting a lot of resources into civil aviation so that we are able to have capable human resources, we are able to have capable systems in place, we are able to have capable infrastructure in place. Coming to the awareness of our people, if you go to the Juba International Airport now, you will get a lot of people coming in and going out. Control has become an issue. And this is something to do with awareness. Our people do not know that airports are not supposed to be places where people just move in and move out. And we are trying to tell them through this system that it is not good to move in and move out of the airport at your own will. It is a security sensitive place and it has to be controlled. Why don't we take a break from there? Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, Band management, passport photo, stand up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dol Comedia Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor. We speak of the South Sudan Civil Aviation Authority. Is it a good idea for fixing South Sudan? And let me put that question to the CEO, D Captain David Subek. Is your organization a good idea for fixing South Sudan? Is it fixing South Sudan? Uh, thank you, Mading. I, I'm quite sure that fixing South Sudan, this is a good theme in the program that we are having. Because this is where we can interact with our general public to know what is required of us and what is required 
of them. As my colleague have recently said, a uh, few things, uh, like for example, the major issue that we are facing, the general public do not know that moving into the airport or out of the airport at randomly is not recognized by International Civil Aviation Authority. You must come when you are traveling, when you are... and if you have a credible uh, entry ID into the airport, not just to come and enter. Let us take, for example, bodies when we receive our beloved dead ones or sending away the bodies. If you see the influx of people into the airport, it's really unwanted, very much unwanted in civil aviation. Uh, because this actually gives us a risk in influx of people coming in. You will not know who is your enemy within these people. Hmm? Somebody can just sneak in into the public and then can carry out any act of unlawful interference. It's in a the security airport. nightmare. Yeah, it's very big security nightmare. And what are you doing about it? Now, through these talks now we are talking about uh, fixing South Sudan. I think this is where our awareness we are trying to bring forward, first of all, for the general public to know that this is not needed. If Ma many bodies have been set up in South Sudan and they are not functional. Is your institution a good idea for fixing South Sudan? It is really a good idea to fix South Sudan. What has it done for South Sudan? What is done now, for example, let me say we have opportunities eh, for South Sudanese to join the aviation industry. But at the moment, we, due to financial constraints, we are not able to, to recruit people. But those opportunities are there. And then, on top of that, there are businesses, opportunities as well in, uh, in, the, in the civil aviation. For example, if you see many of these uh, aircrafts uh, moving from Juba and uh, within the states, these are owned by most of our nationals. They are partners with the other people. So I think they are benefiting out of it. And we are the one uh, regulating, issuing them a temporary permit after inspection of all their aircraft that they, they bring in. Speaking about uh, some of the challenges that you have hi highlighted, it seems like there's a lot of vacuum. And whether you are suggesting that there must be awareness that people should know they should not just even drive up to the terminal uh, at the airport because that is a, a safety uh, risk. And Chol, coming back to the opportunities that you have, you have an opportunity to change this. So how, how are you planning this thing? Okay, thank you, Mudingor. Coming back to the issue of whether South Sudan uh, civil aviation is a good idea for fixing South Sudan, I would like to say that it is a good idea for fixing South Sudan. One, aviation, as I said, is the most fastest business in the world. It connects people at a shorter time. It brings goods in at a shorter time. South Sudan, being a landlocked country, benefits from this so much. If you look at the airport now, we have a good number of uh, warehouses at the airport facilitating air transport business. And we are getting at least now some fragile goods at the right time to help our hospitals and to help other sectors that are critical uh, using the air transport business. So it's a good idea if it is improved, it will improve the economy of South Sudan. And then, when we respect our rules, as my boss has just said, if people respect laws in, in every sector, including the civil aviation sector, if we say people should not go to the airport at the time they are not supposed to be there, if people obey these rules, it will be a good way forward in fixing our country. Because rules start with the constitution. You respect your constitution, you respect your laws at the particular institutions, see people become at least organized. And when we are organized, we are at least moving somewhere in fixing South Sudan in the right direction. Coming to the opportunities on, on how we should do it, we are now working with the, with the board. And let me say this, our president has done a good thing. The board that has been appointed now is a very strong board uh, with all the key security sector heads in it. 
And we believe that things that were facing civil aviation in terms of uh, policy moving forward, they will all be sorted out. Uh, there is already a change you have seen at the airport. Some demolition is taking place, and we hope through that things will be organized. There is also a road that has been marked right now, just after Crown Hotel. That will be the diversion of all the traffic that go through the airport uh, to Thongpeng area. And when that happens, the number of vehicles that will be coming to the airport will be less. And we hope that that will create a security opportunity because we will be fixing our barriers now at the right places and we will be able to control movement of the people to the airport, including people who go there to mourn their dear ones at the, at the airside. I think it is uh, important to underscore the fact that the airport is porous and you have uh, issues of control that you are trying to overcome. So you have a master plan. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, we do have a master plan. Uh, first of most, I think, you know, security control or airport control become very easy when the infrastructure is in place. For example, security, first of all, it starts with the infrastructure of manning the defense. If the defense is well put and all the gates are well uh, installed, eh? then now after the gates, you come to the passes being issued to whoever is authorized or is allowed to come in. Eh? Then after that, we use now the main uh, capacity, which is the, the knowledge. All these things, they go together. But if one is missing, it will be very difficult to, to control, especially the infrastructure. And the infrastructure actually start, the challenge start from the top. Up to now, we are talking as CA uh, heads. Uh, you won't believe that up to now we don't have a headquarter for us to operate in jointly with the, our other DGs eh? so that we can plan properly to make our work go smoothly. We don't have offices. Eh? So infrastructure alone is the, the problem that can really put control of the airport in place. And speaking of infrastructure, the airport is the gateway into South Sudan. And when you look at the current terminals, the temporary ones, it, it must be a very shameful face for South Sudan. People have complained, it is so narrow, and there are uh, holes underneath, people fall down. It's so messy. So that probably has kept you awake at night at sometimes. What do you think about that? When, what will it take to change it and how soon? As I've said earlier, I'm hoping for the end of towards the end of this month, when the rehabilitation of the old terminal will be finished. I believe it will at least bring people into a comfortable uh, movement in the airport, especially those who are traveling and uh, arriving. Is this a breaking news that in May we are going to see the rehabilitation, rehabilitation of the new terminal? Will it happen? Because that deadlines have been set and broken. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to promise, but uh, we are fighting hard because as the contractor said, the conveyor belt is on uh, Mombasa port now. As soon as it arrives Juba, I believe that will be the, but depending on the logistic movement now, what is the challenge there? But as soon as they arrive, I believe that will be the dead uh, line. And what difference is it going to make? The difference will be people will be comfortable. You have a good place to sit enough space, you will be protected from, uh, for example, as you said, people are falling into holes, there will be no more holes. And uh, also will be protected from the rain, especially now, I'm very much uneasy as the rain is coming in. Uh, so and we have to move in very fast. Just to add on that, of course, uh, some people had been complaining about their bags being checked manually, and as senior management, we had noted this. And with the completion of the new terminal building, there will be all security equipment in place, and your bags will be scanned through uh, uh, well-agreed international systems. And we hope things of complaint that my things, private things, are being checked in by some aviation officers will not be, be longer there. And uh, the best description of whatever exists that is called the, the, the terminal, the, the temporary terminal, is 
chaos that prevails because you have people who come and they don't even work there. So when it comes to control, keeping people at bay because you don't see this in other airports. But in South Sudan, this is quite a phenomenon that you have random people just coming where they shouldn't be. So this is also going to change with the new changes. Yes, of course, that is a key priority because when we are talking of the, of the demolition of all those small offices at the airport, there will be few people coming to the airport now. The people who will be allowed to come to the airport will be people who are working directly with civil aviation or security agents working at the airport, people who are not really working for civil aviation coming to look for tickets will not be allowed because tickets will be issued outside the airport control area. So there will be a maximum control and people who will be coming direct to the terminal building will be people who are authorized with clear IDs for working in the terminal building. Not all of us will be there, even myself I will not be there. I can only go there if there is supervision that I need my attention or to see your attention, but people who will be working at the terminal building will have special ID cards, and that is their job. So we hope public will enjoy the services of the airport when we get our, our airport in order. We may not be able to put deadline on, on May or May something, because basically we know very well that we are not in charge of everything. The financial aspect of the construction is not in our hand, it is with the <coughs> Ministry of Finance, and as we know, the country has a lot of uh, financial challenges and the priority are enormous. So sometime, if our priority becomes second, we may wait a bit. So we may not give you a deadline now that we will finish the terminal building on the 15th, but it is our hope that by the mid of May or the end of the May, uh, the end, end of the month of May, we expect something to have significantly progress. And give you an idea of the stakeholders that you are dealing with, that is the public, and then who are the rest? We have a lot of stakeholders. The key important stakeholders we have are our travelers, the passengers. These are the people that we take care of the security most. We make sure that they travel safely, they use the airport in a convenient way, the airport should be conducive for them. These are our first stakeholders. Of course, being a government, we have government as a stakeholder, and we have the, the, the business, and by, uh, the business uh, people who are using the airport, like the air operators, the ground handling companies, the warehouses companies, and the general public. These are all, even international bodies, like International Civil Aviation uh, Authority, like African uh, Aviation uh, Commission, like African Airlines Association, these are all our stakeholders, and we have to work hard to ensure that their interests are, are harmonized and fulfilled. And for also, the CEO, can you say that you are the man to fix South Sudan in this area of aviation? I believe in this time I have come in, we are really very positive with our team. We want to do something for South Sudan. That is fixing civil aviation of South Sudan in, in properly. If I may also add into what you said, um, some of our stakeholders are including the UN, the NGOs, and uh, other international bodies, not to forget them. These are our stakeholders. Yeah, but I believe we are going to fix South Sudan civil aviation in order. First of all, if I may flash back, when we came in 2006, we had very minimum number of Southerners who were personnel of civil aviation. Because in the past, in the beginning, uh, the North or the regime of Khartoum did not actually recruit many Southerners into the institution. So when we came in, good enough, take for example myself. I have never been trained in Khartoum or in South or in the former Sudan, uh, I train myself outside as an individual, plus some others who are with me now in the airport. So when they in, the peace came into the country, we who volunteered to come in and serve our country, I think we had a, a good start. But now we want to improve, to add 
bring in some new young uh, nationals eh, to be recruited, trained, so that they can take over now properly from, from us. Eh? You have laid the foundation. You have laid the foundation. And you will capitalize on it. Exactly. It's not going to be business as usual. It is not. We Change really. is coming to the airport and yes. to the civil aviation I and to South Sudan. Believe me, it is coming. We will make it. Thank if, you. If we get public and our government support, we will make it. Thank you for coming on Fixing South Sudan. Thank you very much.